All right, well, good evening. So for tonight, okay, good evening again. So what I have planned for us for tonight, remember we started the program last time with inheritance with a product and software. So we, I think we need to add the main to finish it. And then we're going to run it and then talk about it. So I'm going to cover a few more inheritance topics. And I would like to also cover abstract classes and final classes. And then um, we're going to do something different. Um, we're going to go together to the exercise at the end of the book and I'll do it in front. So uh, I think that's the best way to actually learn about the abstract and final classes. Just use them and then see the rules. So they're governed by various rules that you need to know. Um, and how you can use them in your programs. And then uh, we should have some lab time. There were some questions about the pig Latin, since this was the most confusing assignment. Um, I think part of it is because the, there's so many different conditions you have to account for. But in any case, I would like to uh, give you some lab time. And those of you who have questions, you can answer them. I just received so many emails that I can't, I can't debug every program. It's just. You know, I need to have a couple of clones and then, then I can probably do it, but not, not the things out right now. So, um, let's see, anything else? Anything else? Yeah, probably. Uh -huh. No? I feel like I had some announcement that I can't think about right now, so. Oh, well, I guess the one thing is some of you who are not here last time, what are you going to do when we finish starting half of our program last time? So who has the program from last time? All right. Well, maybe you can pair up and watch the other person because I don't want to start from scratch. This would be too time consuming. So if you don't have it, please be a navigator to someone who does have it so you can see what's going on. And it is the exercise from the book so you can catch up with it, but it's of course much better to do it from scratch. Let's see if I have it. So I have a finished program. Oh, um, how far did we get in this program? Well, I yes. stayed late and I finished it, so. All right, well, shall we just review it then? It seems like, let's do Okay, so change of plans. Go ahead and um, open up the program. And if you haven't finished it, you can download it from week eight module is the chapter 11 product and then just let's do a code review together and then i'm going to give a lecture on inheritance to talk about some of the inheritance principles that you're seeing in this program so take a moment download and zip uh, actually i think it's google might zip it when you try to try to download and it won't be an archive file it will be a seven zip so you have to unzip it outside of eclipse if you're doing that and uh, I'll give you a few moments, and the goal is to be here with the program running. Oops.
So just review the code together. Just giving everyone a minute to open it in your machine. start reviewing it so remember that we have a the product DB class which returns a product type and then the other thing that happens in the product DB class is that it's going to create an instance of a uh, the type of object based on the product code. So if the product code indicates that we have a book, then we're going to get a new instance of a book, right? So if it's Java, JSP, or MySQL, it's a book. Or if it's uh, it's going to create an instance of a software. Um, in fact, let me try this here. Oops. Um, it hasn't been invited. All right. Um, and then uh, we looked at the, the product class. You all recall it's the same. Well, there, there is one thing to point out here. In the product class, we did we did override the toString method of the Java super class object as a toString method. Do you recall anything about this? So this is a this is the type of notation we use uh, when we would like to not only reuse a method of a super class but actually change up the functionality functionality. Of it override, and then the um, and then the name of the method, and so the original object to string method is going to return a hash code of the object. But you, it's a standard practice in Java. You override it, and you can else. So you reuse the to string method downstream from the object class. This was one example of inheritance in use. Then how do you actually extend the Superclass from a subclass. We use the expense keyword. So now with the book, expense product, and that's the first thing you need to do. When you extend the product, then the classes of the, um, sorry, the methods of the product are available in the book. That's not all you have to do. There are a lot of rules here, so that's why this chapter, I think if there's anything tricky about this chapter is there are a lot of rules you have to keep in our PDR, so you know what to use when. You have to extend the product, and then in the constructor of the subclass, you need to instantiate the object of the superclass. And you do this by using a super, the super method. When you call super, this is going to instantiate or call the constructor of product. So that's the other thing you need to do. And then after that, you can add the specific 
whatever else you need to instantiate for the specific subclass, in this case, book. And the, um, again, here we have a override annotation to string. And in this case, it's going to override not the one from the object, it's going to override the one clauses from it, which in this case is product. And so we can say return super to string, which is going to return the description from the product class, but you are going to extend it by saying plus by author, right? So again, the whole thing with inheritance is that you can reuse functionality instead of write it from scratch. You can reuse functionality and you can extend it, right? And the same with the software. So the software, we didn't I didn't finish this one here, um, but with the software is the same thing. Um, you're going to extend the product and then you have two different types of products. This one, did we finish it? Yeah, I guess we did. Um, okay. So in the main class, we get the product object by calling the get product from the database and then it returns a product. So this is an example of something we call polymorphism. And polymorphism means that Java knows to exchange one object type for another um, when necessary and treat them interchangeably when it makes sense to do so. So we have a product type here, but when we're using them, Java is going to know if, um, if this product should be treated as a book or as a software. And it knows this behind the scenes. And then we say if the product is not now, so if we have no object, to check if an object is not there, you can check if it's now. So if it's not now, then we're going to print the description and the price. And again, because of the polymorphic structure, it's going to know <clears throat> whether to refer to a book or to a software program, right? So you don't have to be concerned here with saying if it's a book or if it's a, a software. Let's, um, let's give me a couple other examples of inheritance. What might be, what might be some cases where you might use inheritance? In fact, stop sharing. Daniel. 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 Second. Yes. Um, so this is an example with the problem. Okay, so let's look at the lecture now and hopefully it will help to refer between the lecture and the code to make sense of this. So we have a product, so this is referred to as the superclass. These two refer to as the subclasses. So we have a hierarchical structure. The structure goes all the way up to the root of all classes, which is the object. In Java, the root of all classes is the object for all other classes, whether they're part of the Java library or they our own classes, they all inherit from the object. Something else to know about Java. Java is a, what we call a single inheritance language. In other words, the book can inherit from the product, but it can inherit from the product in some other class. So it's only a single arrow down, right? There may be cases when you might need to inherit classes. So Java gives us a structure called uh, interfaces we're going to, uh, to learn about next time. Um, where you can use interfaces to, you know, mimic multiple inheritance. But by, you know, the question, Java is a single inheritance language. So once you have inherited, um, you can go about using the superclass in two different ways. One is you can just use the, class, the methods directly as they are. So if you need to call the description of the product from the book, you can just call it. 
or you can override and with the add override as I showed you with the two string and then add your additional functionality. All right. Okay, so maybe I'll stop here again. So I'd like you to give me three, four examples of inheritance in addition to a product book software. When give me some other examples. One might use inheritance. Well, if we did the extra credit assignment, I believe there were like cookies and some other kind of baked okay. goods. So we have baked goods and these other perfect. cookies and I don't know what that was, breads. Okay, perfect. So you can have baked goods and then you can have so baked goods would be the, the super class and then subclasses of I don't know, croissants. And so like toppings and stuff too, like toppings. Toppings. Toppings um, is baked goods. Uh, well, is like toppings like a burgers, subclass? Yeah. Like if you had like burgers, then you had different toppings. Okay. So does this relate to the super class subclass? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm always thinking about it. I'm not. You know, I'm not sure it does. I think that the toppings would be perhaps an instance variable of the burger that you would set up, right? But but you could have a restaurant and under it like burgers, pizza, and uh, I don't know, pie. Um, I don't know if it would be a yeah. restaurant, but maybe a menu. Uh, a menu. Menu. Yeah. You can have a menu super class or menu item super class, and then you have burgers and pizzas and so on. So that would be one example. Any other example? Cards. This is the one that always comes up. Okay. <laughs> so, how would that? Look, what does it look like? What would be the super class? What would be the subclasses? Cards would be super class, and then okay. you have the SEPs, SSIs, like that. So, like manufacturers would be a super class. Manufacturers would be a super class of. And the, the type. Whatever. Um, the models might be, you, you could have a car with, a, I guess, the different models and normally the way this example comes up is vehicle and then car, motorcycle, and oh, no, else. different types of vehicles, different in sense to actually or to make it into a what else? Let's do two more. Animals? Oh, there you go. Cats, dogs. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so we can do animals and then different, different types of animals. So we can also, in fact, the scientific way of, um, you know, genus and whatever, not, not biologists, but. You can certainly use um, subclass, <coughs> superclass, subclass relationship to represent the biology of the species. Right? So that would be perfect. And um, and then we have mammals, cats, and tigers, and domestic cats, and so on. Right. So, all right. So I think these are some good examples. Uh, and again, it's not always the case. It doesn't always make sense to have a Sub, super class, subclass. You should think about it before you do your code. It might make sense that what you think it, what you're thinking is a subclass might actually be an instance variable of the same class, right? So it's a little bit of a decision to make, but um, <coughs> if, if it can fit in the instance variable, you don't need to worry about creating a whole other class about it. Okay, so the object class in the Java lang is, is, as I mentioned, the root of all um, classes in Java. Some of the methods of the object class include to string, equals to check equality of methods, get class, clone an object, and then get the hash code, which is a value representing the object, um, such as this one right here. So if you call the string method without overriding it in a subclass, it's going to return the name of the object and then a hash code associated with it. A review of access modifiers because now we're going to introduce um, 
a couple new ones. So you know that the private um, access modifier allows whatever you declare as private to only be visible within the same class. Public, available in all packages. Protected is one that is in the same package and then subclasses. So if you, this is the one you'd use in cases where you want your subclasses only to see whatever is protected, right? So okay. that's, so let's see. So let's say that you have a you have a program that has um, maybe it has customers and employees, and then you want your employees to be um, I don't know, teachers and admins, for example. And so employees might have uh, salary. So salary will be protected, so it's available to the admins and to the teachers, but it's not available to customers. So maybe students make more sense, right? So you, you constrain the access by only making it available down from the super class, but not to other classes that might be in the same app. Okay, good, good question. Oh, and also uh, you have noticed that if you don't put any access modifier, there is no syntax error. And so what this means is that um, whatever it is you're declaring is available in the same package. Oh. I mean, if I don't put any of those three. Mm -hmm. If you don't put any of them, it's going to be available in the same package. So the annotation for overriding the method is the add override. And then it only applies to the method directly under it. If you have three, four methods um, after, it only applies to the one directly underneath the add override. If you, if you wanted to override five methods, you have to keep on saying add override uh, above each one of them. You actually might have to do that sometimes. I First, thought the add override was only to kind of note that you're overriding a um, a higher method, right? Correct. But then you don't really need that add override. Well, you do need it if you're, you only need it if you're overriding a higher method, correct. But what I was saying is that it might be the case that you need to change the functionality of five methods of the super class. That's not impossible. So then you'd have to say at override above each one of them. If you're not overriding, if you're just using them or calling them, then you don't need to, to put it there. Okay, so we have an example here with a protected. So we have a protected static int count. And so again, this will be only available to the product class and the book and software class. And that's because we want to count any type of product. Count will be used by the books and by the software. So I told all right. And so uh, we already saw in the example to declare a subclass you extend the superclass. Sometimes you might also hear them called um, parent child, but I think in Java generally you'll hear them called super and subclass. And then to call a method of a superclass, you use super dot the method name. And as we saw in the example, the super is also called in the constructor to trigger the constructor of the superclass. So these are all different things going on that you need to keep you know, in your heads as you're working with these programs. Okay. And most likely it will take some time to get to learn them all because it's a lot, a lot of detail. Okay, so here is the constructor calling, this, calling the two string method of the product class. And you can hear, for example, three different versions of two strings. So it's been are implemented differently in the product, the book, by adding an author, and in the software by adding a version. So here are some examples of using methods that have been overridden. And uh, you can here see uh, an example of a polymorphically exchanging product with book right, and product with software, and this works, and Java is going to figure out uh, behind the scenes what is the appropriate method to call at the time. So polymorphism usually it's, um, because you don't see it, you, we talk about it, and it happens behind the scene, it's a little difficult to grasp, so we, we can just keep on revisiting it. Maybe we can look at the tutorial 
Uh, I think to Claudio's point, he has a pretty good one. Okay, so uh, let's see. All right, so you, you may want to check if two objects are the same. So you can use the product. If, if you want to see if the, if the variables refer to the same object, you're going to say, so the first one, and then you call the equals on that method. And then you pass it product two, and if they're the same, then they're going to return true, right? So they return true because product one, we assign it to product two, so they are equal. And then we check the quality, and this will be true. Do they refer to different objects that store the same data? So that's different. So they may be different objects that happen to contain. So for example, Anu and I, by coincidence, may have the same birth date. So the data would be the same, but with different objects, right? And I just mean the month and the day, by the way. Uh, and so, for example, product one and product two, if we check for equality here, this will return false. All right, and so now we talk about um, abstract and final classes, and then we're going to do an exercise. Okay, so you can have an abstract class. An abstract class is a class where um, when you inherit this class, you need to do the implementation of the methods. An abstract class can have regular methods or abstract methods. So for example, here, Uh, so the if we make the product class abstract and it has an abstract method display text take a look here the abstract methods don't have an implementation because they're abstract so we just have the parents we don't have the curly braces and so what that means is that if the book class extends the product class it's going to need to override the abstract method and then do its own implementation to it. Why would you want to do something like that? Well, because you want to impose a structure. You want to make sure that the book has a display text. So you want to make sure the book displays a description. So you say, hey, you have to implement the display text, but you do it you know, as you need to do it for the book particularly. On the other hand, sometimes you want a subclass to inherit a class and to only use the methods, but the methods cannot be um, changed. So that's the opposite example. And so if this is the case, then you're going to declare it as final. So we have a public final class extends the book, which has a final method to get version. And so um, at this point, you can call get version, but you're not going to be able to make changes to it in the subclass because you, sh you know, in this case, you shouldn't be changing the version. It's, it needs to be uniform. So again, it is going to impose structural constraints on your project. Yes. So do you have to um, get to declare the version inside the uh, constructor then? Uh, yeah. So the version is probably this is not a complete set of code. The version is um, most likely going to be an instance variable in the class. Oh, it's an instance variable. It could be an instance variable, okay. most likely. Um, so let's do the examples from the book because uh, just talking about it doesn't, it's not the same as doing it. And uh, then after that, we'll take a break and then you can have lab time. So we are going to work with exercise 11-2, use the final, the abstract and final keywords, and we all need to get the starter code, which is on your file drives, on my file drive. 
for chapter 11, exercise 2. Product that is in the EX starts folder. Yes. Exercise eleven dash two. Eleven dash two. People sometimes make fun of object-oriented programming because it has just so many rules, so it can get, you know, um, it can get just too much of object-oriented, right? I need to find this meme, but it shows, you know, this is what people think object-oriented looks like in all these structures, and actually it's just like this chaotic <laughs> mess of lines. So it can get like that as well. Um, Maybe I'll find it during the break and show you. So test it. Uh, the product called. What's that? Should we be uploading the Let's upload the starter one and we're going to do it together here. Okay. Okay. So, as I said, chapter 11 dash two. Exercise two. Um, no, I can give you my first drive to copy it, but you should bring it on because we're just holding up the Bring your first drives. Why didn't you bring? <laughs> but let me do it. I, I know I keep on. Did I tell you the story how someone wiped my time? Oh my God. Do that. Really? So I was passing out around the program. Yeah. And when it came back to me, there was literally nothing on it. <laughs> no, the TA said, So you, it looks like your father's job is now wiped out. And I said, No, you're joking, right? No, they weren't joking. It was actually wiped out. So I think someone somehow selected to and then we restored it. But, uh, it was very dramatic. So from now on, I do this myself. <laughs> 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 I trust you, but no, I understand this. There's no trust. In principle, so given me. No, that's why. The other story I was telling recently in the other class, um, did I say the story, story about Jail okay, last time? So I was talking with this web developer and um, so, so what languages do you know, do you use, I say, and he said, well, mostly web languages, you know, JavaScript, Jail, and Jail. And I said, oh, wow, I know Jail, I need to go, this must be the new JavaScript framework I haven't heard about. But it turned out that he had made a typo. It was meaning to write Java 
in me, so then the price edition. No. But because there's so many JavaScript frameworks, I was like, wow, okay, I guess I'm behind. <laughs> I better go and you know, learn about Gile. But it's a cool name, so maybe I, I should do something with it. It sounds like a real thing, right? Have you heard of Gile? <laughs> All right. So if you please, uh, let's let's go over the exercise together. Oh, actions, uh, you have imported the file now and uh, review the code. So we have the three classes. The software in the book extending from the product, the product DB. And the main app. Okay, so open the product class and then add the abstract keyword to the class declaration. No, it's just the word abstract you just need to add to the product class. <coughs> okay, so it would be um so it would be public abstract class product. In the product class, add an abstract method named display text. This method should accept no parameters and it should return a string object. So let's go towards the bottom of the product class here. So we're going to have a public abstract. Thing. get display text and again if it's an abstract method uh, there is no implementation so no curly braces And also, I forgot to mention that you can't create an object of the abstract class. So you, you must implement the abstract methods and you can't create a new instance of the object. Okay, uh, next, attempt to compile the application. This should display an error message that indicates that the book and software classes must override the get display text method. So let's try to compile. So we're getting some error messages in the two classes. And it tells us, I don't know if you can see it, but um, the type software must implement the inherited abstract method product that get displayed text. So open the book and software classes, and then add the get display method to these classes that overrides the abstract get display method of the product class. Uh, yes, it's page three or four. Okay, so one easy way to do this is to rename the string method to get display text. Um, all right, so we have a toggle right, and we're going to make this to string into get display text. So 
I'll display a melody. And then we do the same with the book class. And in the Android class, you keep on using the abstract methods of the Android library, and then you override them, so you work a lot of these, with all of these. Um, let's see here. String. Okay, and then when you save all, the errors should go away. Open the product app class, then modify it so it calls the get display method of a product object instead of to string, and then verify that the application runs correctly. So, was everyone able to override get display text from product, sorry, from book and software? So take another minute. So again, what we did was we made the product class abstract and we made the abstract, the get display text abstract as well. And then in the software and in the book, we changed to string to get display text, which overrides now, provides an implementation for the abstract class. And then the error goes away. And then let's test that it works by changing to string to get display text from the app here. So to uh, get display text. And does this work? Oops. So this appears to display the description and now we have verified that the abstract, the addition of the abstract methods and classes works. So we created a public abstract string get display text in the product class, right? We created an abstract method, is what we would call this. Okay, so we, we created an abstract method in the product class, right. right? But I guess why did we have to create that if we, instead of overriding it, could we have just created the public string get display text inside the, um, the software and the book classes separately? Yes, but then we would not learn about abstract classes. <laughs> okay. So what does the get display text do in the part of the, in the part of class? So it just okay. The only thing it does is it sets the requirement that if you're going to use a product class, then you better have a this then you better display. You better use that method. You better use this method. Right? Okay. So you if you have a product class, you better have a way to display information about your product. That's what okay. it's saying. So when I have that and then I ran it before I put the override methods for get display text in the book in software, it still worked. It shouldn't have worked then. Right? What did you do? So I ran it before I uh, overrode the get display text method in book and uh, software. Then you probably didn't. Um, no, that should not be one. Maybe you hadn't saved it. That should not work. That's one of the steps was to verify that yeah. it does not work. So it should not work. So let's test it together. So if I comment out, let me cut this for, from the software. 
And now I'm getting an error message in the software. If you take a look up here, Jeremy, and everyone else. And it's saying the software type must implement inherited abstract method product does get displayed text. So it will not compile unless you inherit, unless you implement. Any other questions with abstract class? Let's, let's try the final, which is, you can think of it almost as the opposite. In the book class, are the final keywords to the class declaration. So it will be public final. Okay, so if you have an abstract class, that means you can't create an instance of the class. And if you have abstract methods, the abstract method doesn't have an implementation here. Oh, okay. So you have to implement it in the subclass. So the result is still the same. Well, actually, if you don't implement it in a subclass, you get a syntax error. But if you do implement it, yes, the result will be the same okay. to display uh, the information. Could you give another example where this could be used? Yeah, um, yeah sure. Um, so like I said, um, in the Android Studio, you have to conform to their expectations how you use the methods. So you can't build apps unless you're using the proper Android methods. So they have all these abstract classes there that you have to then um, inherit from, and then they force you into implementing certain methods, right? So for example, you know, if you're working with um, like broadcasting, then there are certain things you have to do. So it's, it just structures you into what you should be doing. So if you get to use my class, that's fine, but then you must do the following. Let me think of a different example. Um, so maybe you have, I don't know, let's say you have franchises that are maybe different, and then the, sub, the super class franchise organization has a requirement add logo and they make it into an abstract class with an abstract method add logo. And then each franchise has to have a logo, but they get to have a logo that maybe has, you know, the original plus the of place. Seattle or yeah. of wherever. So that would be another example. Yeah. And now let's look at the final. Okay, so we're going to have a, if we continue here with the final class in the book class, add the final keyword to its class declaration. So public final class book extends declaration. Create a new class named used book that inherits the book class. You don't need to include any code in the body. This should display an error message that indicates that the book class can be inherited because it's final. All right, so add here in the business new class, use book. Add a new class, use book. So if you do this, then the subclass can't inherit, which is what we're going to demonstrate, the class. Um, or you can also use a final, so the final can be applied to a class to prevent it from being inherited, or to a method from preventing from being overri overridden. All right, so if we say here, uh, extends book, then we should get an error message telling us that the type used book 
cannot subclass the final class book. Right. In the book class, remove the final keyword from his declaration and then run the application to make sure it runs correctly. So if I remove the final here, application runs. So let's case with final class. And now a case with final method. In the book class, add the final keyword to a get display text method. So this is going to be public final and get display text. Add a get display text method to the use book class to override the get display text method of the book class. The method can return an empty string. So here we say add override public string get display text. And then it's going to return an empty string. And then it tells us cannot override the final method from the book class because it cannot override final methods. And this was the example with the version, for example, you don't want the version to be overwritten. Or maybe you have a logo that you want you don't want to be you want everyone to use the same logo in all your branches, and then you make it final instead of abstract. Right. So that doesn't work. And then if we, how do we solve this problem then? By removing the final keyword here. And then this should work. Okay. In your homework, which I, I made it due on Wednesday since we just have a short week again. You do need to work with abstract classes. Um, I think at least abstract, maybe abstract and final. So now you have a, an exposure to the topic. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So let's take our first break and then lap time. Yes, go to use book. And what do you ask, Shad? So now the message went away because we removed the final keyword in front of the method name. I think this is all right for us to Okay, I'll take a look just a second. Let me turn off our recording here.